Well, back now to the story we mentioned at the top of the hour. There was some very powerful testimony this morning in front of a gun violence task force in Hartford, Connecticut. It came from a man named Mark Mattioli, who lost his son James in the December 14th school massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary. He spoke passionately about his son, the shooting, the issue of mental health, and how he thinks that more gun laws may not provide all the answers we need. Now, he spoke, we're told, for about 10, 15 minutes, so we've actually called the highlights from that. Watch here. I think there's much more promise for a solution in identifying, researching, and creating solutions along the lines of mental health issues. I think there is a lot of work that can be done there, and I applaud our friends, the Richmonds, who are uh, forging a path down that road. Um, I believe these issues, especially gun violence, are not as complex as you've, as you've been told. There's been a lot on TV. A lot of politicians telling you the way that it is, and it's very difficult, complex. I don't believe it's so complex. I believe the solution may not be as easy to implement as you might, uh, as you, I might hope, but it's a simple concept. We need civility across our nation. What we're seeing are symptoms of a bigger problem. This is a symptom. The problem is not gun laws. The problem is a lack of civility. So I'm 42, when I was 25 years ago, I was okay, I was allowed to go see an R-rated movie. The violence that I saw in that movie paled in comparison to what you see on TV today. Just normal TV, 14-year-olds are out there watching Law and Order SVU and NCIS, and it's, it's, it's just disgusting. We need civility across our nation. We need common decency to prevail. When I was about James's age, he was six, let me, let me change the subject for a moment. So our school, I'm very proud of Sandy Hook, our school is not a building. It's the teachers, the parents, the students. We have some core, core values. I encourage you to visit the website. Cultivating character, okay? We as parents, that's our primary job. We ask the schools to, you know, contribute to that. But we are the primary caregivers and educators, and Sandy Hook is a wonderful example. <sighs> okay, back to me at age six. <laughs> My mom took me to the grocery store, and my parents are the children uh, coming out of the depression. So they're not uh, big on entertaining impulse purchases. So I asked for a pack of bubble gum, and my mom said no. So I stole it. Well, that did not go over well when my mother discovered this uh, as we pulled into our driveway. She drove back to the store, made me hand the gum back to the, the cashier and apologize and say that I would never do it again. That is the type of parenting we need. Parenting is where we need to focus our attention. We do not need complex laws. I am a big proponent of individual accountability and enforcement. So if they're gonna be laws, we should enforce them. What I would say is Chicago has some of the toughest gun laws in the country and I would say to people who wanted to have a, a civil discussion on the topic. I don't think the gun laws are protecting the people, let alone the 500 who perished last year in that city. What have those laws done to make Chicago a safer city? Nothing I, I propose. Can't we do better? Yes. Criminals, by definition, break the law. What we experienced in Sandy Hook, did, did they break the law? Of course they broke the law. These 500 individuals who were killed in Chicago, they're breaking the law. Is one more law? I don't care if you named it James's law. I don't want it. I think we have more than enough on the books. We should ha hold people individually accountable for their actions, and we should enforce laws appropriately. And I would say we're not currently enforcing them appropriately. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.